One way that we're going to work on developing mathematical thinking skills is through demonstration. I'm basically going to solve a lot of sample problems from a wide variety of mathematical problems and basically think out loud as a demonstration, allowing you to see my thought process. The fancy way that we might describe this would be with as verbalized mathematical metacognition. Now you say, what on earth is that? Well, you know, I presume, what verbalization is, and you know what mathematics is. The hard part here is this fancy word, metacognition. We've got, not surprisingly, a nice Wikipedia article on metacognition. The root of this word, cognition, meaning to think, know, the stuff that your brain does. When we put the prefix meta in front of it, we're making it reflexive or turning the word in on itself such that metacognition is cognition about cognition or knowing about knowing or I would prefer to say myself thinking about thinking anytime that we're thinking about what we know or we know how we think we're involved in metacognitive activities we all do metacognitive activities we just may not be aware of it what it's called now, they break down in this article metacognition into a couple components. There's metacognitive knowledge or metacognitive awareness, which I like to call a brain mirror. Imagine your brain being able to look in on itself as it's doing its own thinking brain activities and observe, oh, look at what just passed through my brain. And you're actually consciously aware of what's going on in your brain as it's happening. A step beyond that, beyond just being a passive observer, you can do metacognitive regulation where your brain becomes an active participant in controlling and guiding its own activities. Again, you probably do this already to some extent, you just didn't know the fancy words for it. I do it a lot when I'm solving math problems, and what you'll see in this video as they've got metacognitive regulation broken down into components here, and we're not doing an in-depth step of a study of metacognition here. I just want to give you some brief ideas. When you watch these videos, you'll see me doing a lot of planning. When I first see a math problem, immediately I start thinking, what are some strategies I can use? What tools or resources do I have at my disposal for this type of problem, be it algebraic, geometric, trigonometric? Uh, of those strategies, you know, selecting which one might be the best, most efficient, most appropriate for this given problem. And then as I go on, I'm monitoring the, the success of that. Does this seem to be working? Is this approach, am I getting stuck? Should I go back and try one of those other strategies that I thought of? Or are things going well and I just need to keep pushing through and I've got a chance of making it onto a solution? But then even after having reached a solution, that's not the end. Oh, no, 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 buddy. When you've solved a math problem, the, the fun is only just getting started. You uh, post the post-processing step after I've solved a math problem. Uh, I may spend more time post-processing than I did to solve the actual problem. As I look back and say, as I watch the instant replay of the screen on my mind and watch what just went through my mind when I solved that problem, what techniques worked, what didn't, what would be, what could I use uh, again next time. Uh, w of what I used, you know, what should have I used earlier on in the process? Uh, evaluating how confident I am in different parts of the process. What needs to be double checked or tried again and what doesn't. So if metacognition in itself is on one level a brain mirror um, or an, on another level a brain self-regulation, then verbalized metacognition is an x-ray or a window that you give someone else into your own thinking process. As I'm thinking various thoughts, I don't know what this problem means, I don't know how to solve it, or I'm thinking uh, x plus 3 on a math problem. The metacognitive mirror allows me to take my thoughts and reflect them back into my own brain such that I become an observer of my own thoughts. As I'm consciously aware of my own thoughts, 
I can articulate them. I'm thinking about x plus 3. I'm thinking I don't know how to solve this problem. And then you, as an external observer who doesn't have direct access to my brain, as I verbalize my cognitive activities that I have been aware of through metacognition, you receive what I'm saying, and that essentially gives you uh, x-ray vision into, not into my eyeballs, but into my brain itself. You get an x-ray vision window into my brain to see the depths of what I'm thinking. So that's effectively what we'll be doing here. When I, when we look at some of these sample problems, and I put up a math problem on the screen, this is crucial. It's going to be something that I've never seen before in my entire life. This is not a problem that I've worked through and figured out a nice, clean way to teach it to you. This is a problem that I've never seen before, and my brain is just now coming to terms with it and going through the whole messy process of figuring out how I might get from a question to, to an answer. And I'm going to be trying different things and maybe stumbling and making mistakes along the way, hopefully most of the time ending up at a correct answer eventually. But it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit messy. And if that uh, troubles some people, all I can say is, well, that's the reality. That's the truth of the cognitive process. Basically, no one, I don't know of anyone who can simply look at a math problem they've never seen before and will simply straight away go, boom, I know how to get from the question to the answer every time. Generally, you have to follow a, some nonlinear thinking process. And so that's what you're going to be seeing as I verbalize my own mathematical metacognition.